Thank you. So my name is Christian Lundsen. I am the CTO of the Global Digital Library. Um, and I'll be talking in that role here today, but I'm also the technical lead for the Digital Public Goods Lines, both initiatives that where I'm engaged on behalf of the Norwegian government. Um, the idea of this talk, this seven minutes, is to talk about a campaign we did this spring, where we felt we got sort of the hang of, of crowdsourcing translations. Um, and uh, sort of not at a huge scale, but, but we, we sort of we got some tractions uh, as part of our, our COVID initiatives. And I want to share that experience here and and um, uh, because we thought that was an exciting point for us in terms of, of doing crowdsourcing. Um, and, and also the topic here is, is how we combine crowdsourcing with quality assurance. I heard that was a question for the, for the last speaker. Um, uh, the backdrop here is that we have been developing the Global Digital Library for the last four and a half to five years. This is a project funded by the Norwegian government with a simple idea. We collect Creative Commons early grade reading materials uh, in different languages and then we publish them on a common platform. Uh, currently, we have a pool of 25,000 books where we have vetted the quality of 5,000 of those and they cover 73 languages. Um, if we didn't do any quality assurance, we would have had approximately 300 languages. So that's uh, that's sort of the, the 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 process that we run in terms of quality assurance. Um, we have one way of getting content that is original content. This is an example from Pakistan, where we color, uh, collaborate with the American government and the Pakistani government, and they have provided uh, CC licensed um, uh, materials. Uh, for approximately six or, or for six languages. Um, and the other way that we source content is by translation. Um, and this is sort of the main topic here today. Um, and basically it's, it's pretty simple because we're doing early grade reading materials. Um, it starts with a book in one language and it's translated over to either one or more uh, languages. And, and the magic here is of course that these books are, are very light on text and almost uh, all of them are pretty um, heavy on illustrations, meaning that the benefit of translation is really, really high. Um, we're not exporting a sort of a European story set here or an American story set. We are bringing content from Africa and Asia into a common pool of English and then translating from there uh, uh, mainly. This example here is actually taken from a, a pool of, of government approved books in, in Cambodia. They're doing some lovely work there with early grade reading. Uh, we translated it into English and then it has been translated into a number of other languages. The example here that I'm going to talk a bit more uh, about is actually also Uzbekistan translating it and then government approving that same book. Um, and it's really effective. So for, for the government of, of Uzbekistan, this book would have been like two or three hours effectively uh, in terms of quality assurance. Um, as the COVID pandemic hit, we, we rounded up a few friends. Creative Commons was really, really helpful in this period. Uh, we, we had UNHCR, we had UNESCO come in with also some private partners like Verizon come in. And we, we started a campaign in April. And the idea was simple, uh, translate one story and you'll help a child in your language, read one book. And we called the campaign translate a story uh, because of that. Um, we had no idea of sort of the traction that we could bring in, but it was simple um, and it was much, much a crowdsourcing sort of test for us. Um, and we also invited three other uh, platforms that does sort of approximately the same as, as we do. Uh, and over the course of eight weeks, we had 1200 plus translators and they translated 6,600 books into more than 100 languages. Um, and I think the reflection from our side is afterwards was, was twofold. One, um, how can we do this again? And two, how can we get quality assurance of this mass, uh, massive input of new titles in la many languages that we didn't have before? So that was, that was uh, first of all, a surprise because we've, done, we've tried this before without succeeding in this sort of uh, this magnitude. And, and of course, how can we build upon this? And we, I'm going to try to reflect on, on both here. Um, so what we did afterwards was that we, we saw this 
huge pool of, of, of content. And we did some screening of this and it seemed like many of the translators were really educated people that could do good translations. So it wasn't that the quality was poor, but we need to have some sort of quality assurance. But the first step was that the crowdsourcing had worked uh, and it was sort of a, a hub of people in many of the languages that were collaborating across across um, uh, their homes, because at this point, many people just, they, they were stuck at home, like we in fact are, are right now as well. Uh, but the crowdsourcing had 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 worked. Uh, at that point, we, we targeted a few countries, that's step number two, trying to see if it was possible to get those 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 governments to actually take crowdsources materials and then government approve them. And that is slightly controversial because you're actually sort of going into a pool of content of 100 or 200 books and and, and basically taking something that where well, you don't know the author or you don't know the translator at least. Um, but of the languages that we looked at so far, it seems like the quality is much higher than the skeptics uh, were anticipating. And personally, I was I was I was I was looking positive on this because that is our general uh, take on some of the translations we've, we've seen earlier. And we ended up doing a technical quality assurance as well um, at the end as part of this process. But this process came because we have a positive problem or or a thing that we needed to sort of tap into, and that was a vast, an enormous amount of content that came in during uh, during this 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 process, uh, and after getting UNESCO to help us on this, and they've been really, really lovely as a, as a partner to contact some of, of some sort of a, a, a diverse group of countries uh, where we could sort of test this concept. We've, we've gotten Bangladesh, Kenya, Rwanda, Uzbekistan, and Palestine to do exactly this. Uh, go through quality assure the book, uh, the books, and actually stamp them as government approved on our platform. Um, and the process is really fluent. It's it's something that just a few people in each country um, can can do because that legwork of translation has already been been done. So the first com um, country that will launch is Uzbekistan. And that will happen this month, uh, and we already have complete translation that have been approved uh, also for Rwanda, and we're very far ahead in Palestine as well. And of course, Palestine is doing a standard Arabic. Um, so that's going to be useful for a few other other countries as well. But by doing this, we feel we can tap into the crowdsourcing element of this and and at the same time ensure quality for the end product. The next step for us would be that in the 2021 uh, campaign, after re sort of reimporting all our books as H5P, uh, I mentioned that in my, in my question earlier, we want this to be much more of a remake and quality assurance campaign for the original materials as well. Um, meaning that if you come in here, you can choose to translate, but you can also choose to enhance the quality of the, of the, of the existing materials and nominate those. Um, much like you heard about the, the, the process on women learning. Um, and we're actually we, over time. Over Sorry. time, I'll be really quick, thank you. Um, uh, and, and at the same time, you can translate. So for the next year, the process will be slightly different. Uh, and this is what we want to have partners engage in, uh, where we will have a step where we add interactive elements to the books where that is relevant. Uh, we government approve and uh, and proofread those, and then we launch those. That is actually I was I was uh, I was a bit, bit of a time. I I apologize for that, um, um, but um, I just want to end saying that. This has been something that has really opened our eyes to the combination of crowdsourcing and quality assurance. And, and, and whenever we can get government approval or all the content, we see that it, it travels so much further. It gets that credibility. Um, so that is why we're so excited about, um, about this new change that came with the COVID push for us.